Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you could see it and purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we're discussing the 70th anniversary Seamaster, part of the 2018 festivities. This is the Omega Seamaster 1948 Small Seconds, dedicated to the original Omega Seamaster Small Seconds reference CK2518. That timepiece, the original water-resistant Omega all-arounder, and this timepiece pays tribute to that. 1,948 pieces in stainless steel. There's also a center seconds model, and they are quite distinct. We'll talk about that in just a moment. First, the fit and the feel. 38 millimeters is an excellent size for a tribute watch. It's not classically petite, but nor is it oversized and bulky in the modern paradigm. The watch on my wrist, 38 millimeters in diameter, 12.2 millimeters thick, and a delightful 45.7 millimeters across the wrist. The spacing between the lugs is a vintage 19 millimeters, and the watch wears it well, with a strap that is a beautiful, almost pumpkin-colored calfskin. You can see it's lightly bolstered. It's got a little bit of stuffing as it approaches the lugs. I would say it's perhaps adobe red. That might be the best way to describe this color. It features a folded edge, a monotone stitch, and of course, on the underside, more more calfskin. It is a new Omega factory strap, and it also features Omega's bespoke vintage buckle for its vintage references. Omega uses this buckle, which has a handsome diminishing bevel on its flank, as well as contrasting satin finish and a lovely vintage style relieved and polished Omega logo. You'll see three of those on this watch. The first is on the buckle. The second is on the crown, a vintage Omega logo on the crown, which features a chunky quad spoke knurling. The case band itself is anything but the standard Seamaster or Speedmaster. And I've actually got a Planet Ocean handy, just to remind you what a standard Seamaster or a Speedmaster case looks like. Liar lugs, slightly asymmetrical, a little bit of a countersink for the crown, polished bevels, satin finished flanks, and integrated lugs. This watch is anything but. True to the original CK2518, the lugs are stepped out rather dramatically, almost as dramatically as the buckle between the case and the lug of a longa. You'll also note that there's a handsome contrast between the polish of the mid, uh, I should say rather, of the bezel edge and the case back and the satin finish of the mid case. There's also a contrast with the handsome polish of the lugs, the crown, that satin mid case. And you can see that the details were sweated as there's a lovely transitional bevel from the flats of the side to the hoods of these lugs. It is a graceful looking timepiece with a flat bezel. And you can see a remarkable box section sapphire that has the same dramatic domed profile and even a little of the off axis distortion of a vintage plexiglass. This is a graceful timepiece with a timeless appeal and attention to detail inside and out. On the dial side, the principal differences between this and the center seconds are obviously the presence of a small second subdial, but also the use of leaf hands instead of dauphine, and the absence of any luminescent material on this dial. You see tri-arabics at 9, 12, and 3. All of them are high polished, applique white gold omega logo, dart style polished indices, and the hands at center. All of these are white gold, high grade, in order to reduce the chance of tarnish or oxidation over time. There is a vintage railroad style minutes track outboard, a sunken and snailed sub-seconds with crosshair calibration, and you can see this is a modern watch on the inside. It is a coaxial master chronometer, but how much do you love that third vintage Omega logo, the vintage script, and even the Seamaster name itself? Turn it all over and you have caliber 8804, 35 joules, automatic winding, 55 hour power reserve. You can see ghosted over the case back. The imagery of high performance machines that were current in the year 1948, including a Chris Craft launch and a British Gloucester Meteor fighter, an early jet fighter. You can see that the watch features the standard Omega coaxial decoration with arabesque Cote de Genève and both black polished and blackened screws. So you have the black polish and then you have the black oxidation. The balance is a full bridge with a free sprung index for shock resistance. It has an SI14 silicon hairspring that renders the watch amagnetic to over 15,000 gauss. There is a modern stop seconds function, so you can set the watch and its small seconds precisely to a reference time. It is a coaxial master chronometer, so it has the latest tri-level coaxial, and I should mention this 2019 is 20 years of the Omega coaxial. It is a very precise system, and it is adjusted in six positions as a cased-up watch, not five positions as with the COSC. The watch meets the COSC standard, but Omega makes this a master chronometer, meaning it features 
a METAS certification, six position adjustment as a cased up watch, winding efficiency, power reserve, water resistance, and an anti-magnetism test all rendered on this watch. It's a standard invented by Omega in conjunction with the Swiss Federal Institute of Metrology. It beats away at the quirky coaxial specific 25,200 vibrations per hour, and the watch, true to its roots, is water resistant to 60 meters. You can see this Seamaster CK2518 tribute, the 70th anniversary, 1,948 pieces in stainless steel. Make it yours on the watch box.